Foxhole players are familiar with the horrors of the never-ending war between the Colonials and the Wardens. This war has been going on so long that nothing really scares us anymore. I'm about to shatter that sense of security and familiarity as I delve into the paranormal side of Foxhole's lore. From blood cults to old gods, from black magic to vampires, these are the paranormal happenings within Foxhole's lore. Let's start with the Cult of Blood. A recent Foxhole update brought a host of now familiar changes, but it also silently introduced a murderous cult within the Warden Heartland. While the backlines are often overlooked, you need to understand that this is the best defended territory of the Warden government, and therefore the most likely to hold secrets. Most players never enter these buildings, seemingly placed for purely aesthetic reasons. But if you did happen to enter this particular building and look closely at the wall, you'll see a frantic investigation board. Upon closer inspection, the board reads as follows. You take the time to read the central document written by a watchman constable stationed in the area. It would appear we have reports of a blood cult active in the north. We're not sure who they are or what their motives are, only that they've managed to lure many young wardens into their ranks. One witness reports these cultists laying out their comrades and assembling their corpses in strange shapes. Upon further inspection, we believe they're aligned with the stars, namely, the burning arrowheads. These zealots are dangerous, hidden, and seemingly rabid in their lust for violence. Their targets have been primarily warden and watchers. We've seen no victims of any other class, nor do they appear to maim their own. We believe they've forsaken the sun and are making sacrifices to much older gods. This rhetoric cannot spread or it will lead to even further instability in Siva. While the board remains a mystery, it's clear the blood cult is specifically targeting the military and police force of the warden government. Most items on the board are far too blurry to examine, but one image in particular details a specific position on the map, likely a clue leading to further information on the cult. The next paranormal incident may or may not be linked to the cult of blood. In the Reaching Trail, you can discover a camp of seemingly massacred Warden soldiers. Approaching the still smoldering campfire reveals the following. Blood still stains the frozen earth, and viscera is splattered about. The blood has long since dried, the corpses frozen for many moons. Yet curiously, the coals in the fire still smolder, almost as if someone had spent time here recently. While the bodies are described as being old, the campfire remains fresh, meaning whoever massacred these wardens either stayed at the camp for an extended period or returned to the scene of the crime later. But the most interesting part of this scene has yet to come. If you look closely, you'll notice all the weapons have been taken from the corpses, except one. Laying behind the tent in a pool of blood is the only weapon left behind, a standard-issued rifle. The name Kara is carved into the trigger guard. Small cuts are marked into the stock. This rifle cannot be cleaned. This rifle cannot be loaded. This rifle will not fire. It's too light. Blood pours from the barrel when the trigger is squeezed. You feel it must be cursed, and you aren't sure why you still carry it. Now let's move on to one of the most bizarre paranormal additions to the lore. Something that no one saw coming some very strong hints at the presence of vampires within Siva. The zone of Callum's Cape is the resting place of Neal Callum. The king of the cape and his family are buried here. His grave stands out as larger and more decorated than the rest. But it's not his grave that's of interest here. It's his daughter's grave. A short distance away, you can find an exhumed corpse. Upon examination, your character learns the following. Regrettably, this corpse appears to have been exhumed. At first, you believe the corpse to be a victim of grave robbers. And that still may be so, as the royal remains wear no clothing or jewelry. However, there is one oddity you can't ignore. A shard of rotten wood is lodged in its chest. The headstone implies the grave is for Callum's eldest daughter, Mary, who famously withered away, sick in bed without eating for months, turning pale before ultimately perishing, a sad story you think to yourself. Sadder still, that her remains would be desecrated so. Now personally, I don't think it's a coincidence that this slain vampire's grave lies between the River Vane 
and the trail of the dead. While on the subject of cryptids, let's talk about the phantoms of the Ashfields. In Grid H11, Keypad 6, you can find a colonial patrol camp abandoned, and with a journal left behind. It reads as follows. Several small camps such as this are scattered around the Ashfields. You suspect they're used and maintained by various patrols in the area. It seems they use them for both rest stops and location markers. Visibility at night can be low in these burnt out fields. Various personal knickknacks are left behind. It almost seems intentional, as if those posted here have made a ritual of it. Curious, you flip through the journal someone left behind. They're out there. I spoke to Shiro about it in the morning, and he swore on his life it happened. Alexopolis doesn't believe us, but he wasn't there at the time, but we saw them. At first, we took them for warden scouts or a recon unit. I nearly called it in, but we watched them for a while, and they seemed to float. I'm not sure how, but they appeared to slide forward, came right towards us. We raised our firearms, ordering them to halt, but got no reaction. They just floated right through us. I love to chalk it up to exhaustion, which wouldn't be a fib, but that doesn't explain these phantoms that we both experienced. Funnily enough, this piece of lore is actually poking fun at a bug within the game. If you've played Foxhole long enough, you've probably seen an enemy soldier approach you fearlessly, and after firing at the soldier, you come to the conclusion that he is in fact not real. While you and I see this as a bug, the soldiers within the lore see this as ghostly apparitions. Now let's talk about the aquatic horrors living in the waters of Siva. In a previous video, I outlined my theory that there is something dangerous living within Siva's oceans. In case you haven't watched that video, allow me to catch you up. Numerous corpses have appeared along the oceans of Siva, all of which have been consumed down to the skeleton. We can infer that something consumed them by their context. One skeleton sits on a well-trafficked pier somewhere that people wouldn't allow a corpse to sit long enough to decompose so thoroughly. Another can be found right outside the barracks of the island base of the Colonials. Same context, the body must have been consumed rapidly, as surely you wouldn't leave a corpse outside your barracks long enough for it to turn into a skeleton. The third corpse is that of a food smuggler, which your character specifically observes as having been eaten by some sort of animal. But, what kind of animal lives by the sea and consumes humans down to the bone? And, if it really was just a hungry animal, why would the animal leave piles of food and meat completely untouched? Unless, it was only interested in eating human flesh. Overall, the point is that there is something dangerous living in the sea. Now that you've caught up, let's talk about the newest and most concrete pieces of evidence furthering this theory. A recent lore update has brought about a sort of puzzle involving different items and statues. Bringing particular items to particular statues will lead you along a trail of clues. Of interest to us, two of the statues are located at the ocean shore, and both of them are of man-eating mythical creatures. One being a kelpie, which is a sort of magical seahorse that consumes children, and another being a siren who also consumes humans. If you bring particular items to these two statues, they'll actually speak to you and they'll tell you further clues about the puzzle. I won't tell you what the clues are because I don't want to spoil the hunt for any of you, but I will tell you they have disturbing things to say about the old gods. If you haven't subscribed yet, now is the perfect time. I'm making weekly gaming videos. Please like and comment for the algorithm. As always, a huge thank you to our generous patrons for funding the video. And, as always, have a good day.